What's up guys? It's Evan and Harrison from the Wildlife Brothers and we're out here looking for some salamanders and we actually came across something really special. On our first flip of the day, we came across a little ring-necked snake, the first one we found this season. So let's take a look. So this guy here is the Eastern Ring-necked Snake. Now as their name would suggest, these guys are going to be found across the eastern seaboard from around the Pennsylvania area in the northeast all the way down through Georgia and Florida so they have a nice broad range. When we are out in the field, it is always our goal to give you guys the most accurate information that we can. We do check our facts and post though, and it came to our attention that this guy is actually a northern ring-necked snake, not an eastern. So going forward in the video, whenever you hear us say Eastern Ringneck, just know we mean Northern. We all make mistakes, but that's part of the fun. We're always happy to learn along with you guys. Now the habitats that these guys like to inhabit include areas just like this one, with lots of water for them to hunt for their prey, and they love to inhabit nice temperate forests the way we have. These guys need a lot of rocks and logs to hide under, so it's important for these guys to be in areas that are nice and densely covered. So the ringneck snake is going to be eating primarily soft-bodied invertebrates like the red night crawlers we get in this area, so they love to eat earthworms. Now they will actually take earthworms that are almost the same length as their own body. Now to overpower a worm of that size, they have a very mild venom that just kind of slows the worm down a bit so that they can overpower it. Now that poses no threat to a human, but for a worm, it can be pretty deadly. Now, because they're so small, this is actually about maximum size for the eastern ringneck snake. They don't get much bigger than this guy here. They do have a lot of predators in the wild. They'll be taken by an American bullfrog, a great blue heron, or especially other snakes. Uh, garter snakes love to eat these guys, so they do have a lot of threats in the wild, but they are fossorial. That means they're going to be burrowing down and living underground, so that provides them with a lot of protection from their predators. Now they do have that coloration on them, and is that why they have it? Is that aposomatic coloration? That is. So depending on where in their range they're found, their underbelly, which you can see is that on this individual is a bright yellow color, will actually simplify two potential predators that they're venomous. But the farther south they go, the more red their belly will become until they're almost a, a very deep red down in Georgia and Florida. And that's actually to mimic the coral snake, which lives down there. So it's just a method of scaring predators. Awesome. All right, guys, so we brought in our friend Chris Agnato, who we're filming with today, and he's gonna tell you guys a little bit about the anatomy of the ringneck snake. Okay, guys. Now, as Evan was saying, these snakes do have a venom. However, they are rear fanged, okay? They don't have the front fangs that you used to seeing with like rattlesnakes and things like that. Which means they have to really open their mouth wide and actually chew on their prey to envenomate them, okay? Um, there are some snakes, you might recall in my, my garter snake video, where uh, that chewing helps bring in the venom. That's another story, however. Now, these snakes, as you may notice when you get a closer look, they are smooth scaled snakes. As we were saying, they are fossorial. They spend a lot of their time underground and burrowing and stuff like that. Those smooth scales and rounded blunt head really allows them to go through the soil and through the dirt and things like that and burrow without much friction getting in the way. Pretty neat stuff. Now this snake, the ringneck snake, is often mistaken with red-bellied snakes. And really the best way to tell the difference is, you see that ring? The ring will be complete on a ringneck snake. Some red-bellied snakes have a ring, but it's not fully complete. It doesn't connect all the way around like a perfect band like this one. That's pretty neat. Another fun thing about these snakes, especially being, being smooth scaled, is the fact that when they get really thirsty after like a misty night or a, say a, a rainy, drizzly morning, is they'll actually curl up and drink water off their own bodies. And it's really fun to watch. It's really cool stuff. So Chris is gonna give the ring neck snake a release now. Okay, thanks a lot. She was a great customer. Really tolerant of us. Yeah. We're going to release her right back where we found her. And uh, she was right under this rock. You can actually see her burrow, which mm -hmm. is wonderful. So we're going to put the rock back pretty much how it was, as best as we can, which actually looks like it was like that. And then 
we'll place her here and allow her to go under the rocks so we don't squish her. Absolutely. All right. Bye, sweetheart. And away she goes. So we were really lucky to come across this eastern ringneck snake here. It was a totally chance encounter, so we're really glad that we got to film it for you guys. And big shout out to our friend Chris for being in the video with us. What we're going to do for you guys is link his channel down in the description below. And we're also going to link that garter snake video that he mentioned. So definitely go check that out if you're interested in what we do. You'll definitely love what Chris does as well. So go give him some love on his channel. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to the Wildlife Brothers and leave us a like down below. And let us know if you've ever come across a ringneck snake in your home environment. So we'll talk to you guys in another video very soon.